in my last podcast i spoke about mahavtar baba ji's guru sant bogarnath today i will be focusing more on the untouched aspects of mahavtar baba ji's disciple lahri maharshi ji the most magical mystery tour imaginable might be a holy trek to the himalayas in search of the eternal kriya yoga master known as mahavtar baba ji an incarnation of lord krishna having achieved a high level of spiritual awareness and super powers baba ji was and is a great siddha few have seen the great kriya master yet many have claimed that he is the holy being that gave birth to their devotion and spiritual lineages in the words of mahavtar baba ji and i quote if you come to doubt i will give you every reason to doubt if you come suspicious i will give you every reason to be suspicious but if you come seeking love i will show you more love than you have ever known as mentioned in my previous podcast baba ji was born in a family of nambaduri brahmins in a village known as parangapitta in tamil nadu india baba ji's father was a shiva devotee and a hindu priest mahavtar baba ji's birth name was nagraj which translates to serpent king a reference to the energy the snake of kundalini shakti patanjali in his yoga sutras defines kriya yoga as the constant practice of and cultivation of detachment self study and devotion to the lord kriya meditation and yoga techniques have been around for thousands of years but were kept a secret to protect their purity these techniques were utilized by jesus christ and his disciples the buddha and his followers and arjuna the most powerful archer in history as noted in the ancient indian epic mahabharata arjuna and krishna's dialogue are found in the bhagavad gita if you haven't read bhagavad gita yet you are missing something in life kriya yoga was reinitiated into the physical world in 1861 when a spiritual initiate lahari mahashay asked baba ji to be his guru in return baba ji transmitted to him the ancient and powerful knowledge of kriya yoga as per the historical anecdotes lahari mahashay lived as an accountant and a family man by day and a great guru by the night he never slept instead spent all night instructing his disciples lahari mahashay was born on september 30th 1828 in the village of ghurni in bengal at the age of 33 while walking one day in the himalayan foothills near ranikhet he met his guru mahavtar baba ji it was a divine reunion of the two who had been together in many past lives at an awakening touch of blessing known as shakti path lahari mahashay became engulfed in a spiritual aura of divine realization that was never to leave him mahavtar baba ji initiated him in the science of kriya yoga and instructed him to bestow the sacred techniques to all the sincere seekers lahari mahashay returned to his home in kashi to fulfill the mission as the first to teach the lost ancient kriya science in contemporary times he is renowned as a seminal figure in the renaissance of yoga that began in modern india 
in the latter part of the 19th century and continues to this day. In the words of Paramahansa Yogananda, and I quote, As the fragrance of flowers cannot be suppressed, so Lahari Mahashe, quietly living as an ideal householder, could not hide his innate glory. Devotee bees from every part of India begin to seek the divine nectar of the liberated master. The harmoniously balanced life of the great householder, Guru, became the inspiration for thousands of men and women. And I unquote. As Lahari Mahashe exemplified the highest ideals of yoga, union of the little self with God, he is reverenced as a yoga avatar or incarnation of yoga. Paramhansa Yogananda's parents were disciples of Lahari Mahashe. And when he was but an infant in arms, his mother carried him to the home of her guru. Blessing the infant, Lahari Mahashe said, and I quote, Mother, thy little son will be a yogi. As a spiritual engine, he will carry many souls to God's kingdom. And I unquote. Lahari Mahashe established no organization during his lifetime, but made this prediction about 50 years after my passing, an account of my life will be written because of a deep interest in yoga that will arise in the West. The message of yoga will encircle the globe. It will aid in establishing the brotherhood of man, a unity based on humanity's direct perception of the one father, the Nirakar Param Brahma. Lahari Mahashe entered Mahasamadhi in Banaras on September 26, 1895. Swami Keshavanand narrated to Paramahansa Yoganand the conscious passing of Lahari Mahashe. In the words of Keshavanand, and I quote, a few days before my guru relinquished his body, he materialized himself before me as I sat in my hermitage at Haridwar, Uttarakhand, India. Come at once to Banaras. With these words, Lahari Mahashe vanished. I immediately left for Banaras. At my guru's home, and I found many disciples assembled. For hours, that day, the master illustrated the Gita. Then he addressed us simply, I am going home. Sobs of anguish broke out like an irresistible torrent. Be comforted, I shall rise again. After this utterance, Lahari Mahashe thrice turned his body around in a circle, faced the north in his lotus posture and gloriously entered the final Mahasamadhi. And I the last meditation or Mahasamadhi is a practice during which a master who knows beforehand when the final hour is about to strike for the physical body merges himself in the cosmic Om. Fifty years later, in America, as prediction was fulfilled when an increasing interest in yoga in the West inspired Paramahansa Yoganand to write autobiography of a yogi, which contains a beautiful account of Lahari Mahashe's life. In the words of Lahari Mahashe, all time is wasted that is not spent in seeking God. That is all for this session of the USP show. See you in the next episode. Namaskar. Stay home, stay safe and try looking for answers within you.